Well, I want to thank you guys for coming today. Uh, I'm Brian Knight, this is Barry White, as you, as you now know. Uh, <laughs> thanks for two taking here. So, what we're going to talk about today is how to hack, and more importantly, how to prevent being hacked, SQL Server. So we're going to show, mostly we're going to focus on things like SQL injection, and something called cross-site scripting. Most, a lot of us, when I was starting, when I was starting a web company ages ago, um, we all had heard of SQL injection, it's been around forever. But and we all had a vague idea of what it, what it was. It's been around for a long time, but until I got fully pantsed in public, I didn't really know what it really was. So um, that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. It's kind of trying to raise awareness of what it is, how to prevent it, and how to how to how to test your own code, your own code, mind you, uh, against SQL injection. Some of the tools that you can use to test that. Okay. All right. First rule of hacking: uh, think like a hacker. If you're trying to prevent being hacked, think like a hacker. So we want to go ahead and make sure that, you know, what time is this hacker going to get you? He's probably going to get you in the middle of the night. He's going to get you, um, you know, on the weekend probably. When you're, sitting, when you're sitting at home, your pager's off at this point, hopefully. And he's sitting, he's, he's uh, in his mom's basement right then, has nothing to do but eat pizza and hack. So that's when he's going to get you, and, and that's when most hacking occurs is generally going to be at night or, in, or on, the, on the weekend. So... Uh, even with some of the perimeter fences, some of the things like the firewall rules and things like that, like, like I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, SQL injection can get around that. Cause bad code is bad code. So that's what we're going to show you right now. All right, so the basic SQL injection attack, what that's going to do for you, is, well, not do, it's going, what it's going to do to you, excuse me, not for you, is basically they can bypass your firewall, they go through your application to go ahead and run queries directly against your SQL server. So they're going to bypass your, bypass your firewalls and they go right into SQL server and at that point, they're behind your firewall. They can start attacking things like your mainframe, other things, other items in the network. So that's the scary part about this. They can use your web page just like Query Analyzer. And I can't tell you how many companies, even today, have this problem. Matter of fact, you can do a Google on some of the error messages I'm going to show you, and you'll see the companies <laughs> that have this kind of problem. Okay. So here's an example here. So essentially, what I'm showing up here is a, a basic query for a login page. And that's kind of what I'm going to be, what I'm going to be trying to penetrate in, in our example here. So in this, in this example, you can see that I have, I'm trying to get the count of the users where the username is equal to this and the password is equal to this. If I get back the answer of one, that means the username and password matches. The answer of zero means, hey, you're not, you're not a user in my system. Are How your people have seen these in applications today? In applications maybe, you don't have to necessarily say in-house, but how many people have seen these type of so a good a good majority. I see a lot of, about half more than half the hands. A lot of nods. Yeah, a lot of nods. Okay, so if I were to pass in the, the username of Brian, the password of my PW, then I would see something like this, where username is equal to Brian, password equal to my PW. So here's where the problem occurs. Let's say, for example, the hacker enters the system li uh, a login like or one is equal to one. Well, and that's with, that's with a single tick. What that would do is a single tick there is going to end the username part of the query. He's then going to go ahead and say or 1 is equal to 1. 1 is always equal to 1, right? You can say A is equal to A, and the 2 is equal to 2, whatever. It's always going to be true. And then he has double ticks there. That double ticks in SQL Server means go ahead and comment that line forward. So that means you're always a user. And what's going to happen then is it's going to log you in with whatever account is the first account in your SQL Server, which is what account, guys? Yeah, typically an admin, right? So in, in whatever vendor system you may have, I, mean, I can't tell you how many vendor systems I see that have this problem. And they're supposed to be polished systems. So that's what's going to happen. Now I'm in with the admin account, typically. So that's the first account in there. Okay? So the hacker smiles. He knows he has you. Now that he's in, he, can, he knows he can go ahead and do some, some simple, simple tax. This is assuming that, by the way, that I, I'm not trapping errors. There's other ways we'll talk about in a second. If, even if you're trapping errors, doing things like blind SQL injection attacks to where I can loop through and wait for clauses and things like that so I can get Boolean answers, answers yes or no back. So we'll, talk, we'll show more about this in the demo. Now he got you. Okay. So the next attack, he made, he made a, he, let's assume he has some kind of uh, product page where I'm showing a list of products that, that you offer. Well, for example, I may want to go ahead. I don't like the price of your product. I think you're charging $5,000. It's way too much for this camera equipment. I'm going to update the price to a dollar. So what I can do in that case, I would do my single tick again. It's always going to require a single tick to stop the first one. And then I would go ahead and do a, a semicolon to, to, to stop that first batch of query and start a new batch of a query. And here I go ahead and update your product. This is again, assuming I know the schema, and I'm going to show you how you can find out the schema in a second also. So I, I already know your pro you have a products table. I already know you have this column. But I'm going to show you how you can, how you can enumerate that in a second as well. 
Okay? The most, one of the most dangerous commands is going to be the union, the union all statement or the union statement. And that's where I go ahead and, and, and if, I, if, I, if you're showing me a grid of products, I go ahead and I say, okay, that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad I can see your products. Go ahead and show me the username and passwords also with that grid. And I guess I basically union in my own, my own data right into your data. So like a forum, for example. When I first started a, a certain website a long time ago, uh, our forum software was vulnerable to this. And I, I finally got pants publicly when a user went ahead and, and, and unioned like a list of username and passwords and to, to something. So that was a long time ago, thank God. Uh, this was vendor software, by the way. Not so, this something I, I bought, not, uh, not something that I actually made. Uh, I can also, this is where I can also do some interrogation. I may decide to go ahead and union in like, the sysobjects table, or sys.objects in 2005. This is where I can see a list of all the different uh, tables that you have in your system, store procedures, things like that. In this case, I'm doing uh, X type of U. It's going to show me all the user store procedures, all the user tables. Okay? Now, if, if you're actually doing proper error handling and you're trapping that single tick error message, what I could do is go ahead and try to get Boolean yes, no answers back. So by doing wait for clauses. A wait for clause like this, but go ahead and say, let's find out what you're logged in as. Let's see if you're logged in with some standard accounts that I see a lot of developers use. Are you logged in with the SA account? If you are, it's going to wait for 10 seconds and then show me your products page. If not, it comes back immediately. Do you have a, you know, a Northwind database, for example? So things like that, they'll go ahead and, and, and get Boolean yes, no answers back. And I'll show this to you in, in it's my bearish code in a second here. All right. This is a very dangerous one also. This is how... If you're, if you're, if I can't access this objects, I can use this to start figuring out what type of tables and columns you have in, 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 in this uh, for this grid. So having one is equal to one, you can't do that without having a group by statement. So in this case, it's going to let me know that hey, you can't do this without doing a group by statement, and you've got a group by the first first this table, and here's a column name. So it lets me know all that in the error message. Then I start walking my way through. First, so now I know, okay, I know you have a user's table. I know you have a users.username. Now here's the next one. And it shows me the next. So now I have a users.password in the error message. And I keep on walking through until I know all the column names and passwords. And then I go ahead and do something like this where I actually insert my own password and username and give myself gold rights to your, to your system. So you can also do things like creating tables. I've seen this a lot in, um, um, out, in, out in the Internet also, um, where... I want to go ahead and create this big old table, with var card 8000, big wide table, and then I'm going to load it with your web config file or your global ASA file or files that I want to see in clear text on your web page. So I may go ahead and suck in some of your files that you consider secure and bring them in so I can see all the code behind stuff. So everything that you're, you're actually coding in behind the scenes, I can see all that, that code there. Okay. I've been talking long enough. Let's go ahead and enter, and uh, I'm going to bring in Bear. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little chess max action. So Bear is going to show you his code, and he's going to, he's going to go ahead and demonstrate what the code does, the tables. At that point, I'm going to hack him, and then he's going to fix it. Hack, fix, hack, fix. And we're going to show kind of some of the, the standard accounts. Okay. So really, it's going to be like a chess bout here. <clears throat> and we've got a, a login page, which everybody writes. Okay, one second, Bear. If we can go ahead and... Double check, make sure we are. All right, we're recording still. All right, cool. Oh, this is like a football game. All right. <laughs> so let's start for the resolution, guys. So make sure that you guys can see it in the back here. So and I'm gonna clear up some of this force here. Bear's got really bad eyes. <laughs> You've got the bad eyes, buddy. All right. So this is a pretty standard application. It's going to show you login page, maybe a product catalog. Via forums on the home page. It's pretty ugly, you know, but it, it just represents the, the code of what's important. All right. All right, looking good. All right, so here's a login here. This is a click event on our button. And as you can see, we're going to set a connection string. And then as we come down, <clears throat> just what we saw uh, Brian show, there's a, a text box that has a password in it and a text box for a user ID. And we will concatenate that into our uh, select clause. And then we will create a command for it. We'll run it. And then the results that it returns back, if we're good, then we'll go ahead and save that information. And if we're not, we'll go ahead and kick them back out. So let's go ahead and run this. <clears throat> 